flat to the floor, grab it fourth gear, still flat. I've never been through this corner completely flat, and we just did. This is the most powerful the Miata has ever been. <laughs> Welcome to Haggerty's Rated, the review show where we put a journalist and a race car driver into the same car to get their different points of view. At the end, we score the cars based on how they drive, how they feel, and how we think they'll age. Today, the Mazda Miata gets rated. If you like cars and you like driving, you should like Mazda Miatas. And if you don't, I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. The Mazda Miata was born in 1989. The joke was that it was the first British roadster that was actually reliable and worked all the time. It became immediately popular for its reliability, its drivability, and it became the most raced car on any given weekend. The Spec Miata race is hugely popular. People take them to track days all over the place. You can put LS engines in them. You can put turbo engines in them. They always feel right. This is the 2020 Miata Club Sport. It has a two liter inline four engine making 181 horsepower and 151 pound-feet of torque. It has a six speed transmission, a limited slip diff in the back, and it only weighs 2,300 pounds. Do you know how amazing it is for a car today to weigh that little? Every year, cars get bigger, fatter, heavier. But for this generation of Miata, the fourth gen, Mazda made a serious effort to lighten the car. They actually cut about 250 pounds out of it from the previous generation. So now, even though I am sitting in a car that has Bluetooth, rudimentary navigation, uh, lane keep assist, it weighs the same as the car back in the early 90s that barely had functional air conditioning and one airbag. <laughs> And they still feel so good. I mean, the ergonomics in this car are amazing. You just feel the whole thing move around you. I can tell what the back's doing. I can tell what the front's doing. Even though the steering is now electronic assist instead of hydraulic, it's still pretty talkative. Not as good as it used to be, but for the price, you will not find better electronic assisted steering out there. If you've never driven a Miata, you are missing out on a huge, huge, moment in your driving experience, in your driving life. It will teach you a lot about how a car should feel and how a car should talk to you. This is the most powerful the Miata has ever been. It even has more horsepower than the turbocharged one they made in 2004. Zero to 60 is 5.8. It's the quickest it's ever been. This is an amazing generation of Miata. When they first came out with it in 2015, it only had 155 horsepower. Thankfully, they hot-rotted the engine a little bit, and they didn't just add peak horsepower. They added power to the whole range. It's so good. It just leans a little bit. Do big slides. <laughs> it, just, it just breaks away so nicely. And what's great about them is they're rewarding uh, regardless of your skill level. I mean, if you just like to tool around and put the top down, you can do that. If you are, you know, an amateur driver like myself, you can have a good time, you can take it to the track a lot. But if you're someone like Lee, you can also build a spec Miata, put a cage in it, and race it competitively against Camaros and Mustangs and other things in the series. Now obviously Lee's gonna get in the car and he's gonna do some things that I can't really do. The difference though, is that he and I will be closer in our lap times and ability in this car than we would if he got into a 911 Turbo or a Koenigsegg or something because his abilities are so much higher than mine and his limits are so much higher than mine. But I can have a really good time driving at 10 tenths in this, just like he can. Uh, all right, I don't wanna give the car to Lee. I don't wanna get out of it. I wanna keep sliding, but that's the show. It's so great. <laughs> you haven't even gotten out yet and you're already pitching it to me. I'm just saying you're going to like this, Lee. You might want to put yourself in one. Just leaf. give me the key. I'll like decide. It. Did you move the seat back for me? No. It's, the, it's set up for a normal person. Didn't you used to valet? <laughs> Get right into it. 
It's not intimidating by any means. It always surprises me how soft they are, the sprung and the shocks. You know, you can make a lot of grip being soft. I think after 30 or 40 years or whatever, they've been building this thing. Uh, it's got good balance. It's light, front engine, rear wheel drive. I can overpower the rear tires at any time I want, or I can just stay right at their limit. So the front's always there. It's really common for cars to have a little bit too much front bias. It's safer that way. The ABS functions, but it doesn't rotate the car around. We'll make the car understeer. So you can be aggressive, flat to the floor. A little bit of oversteer there, grab it fourth gear, still flat. I've never been through this corner completely flat, and we just did. Here, you gotta be careful. A little floaty back there. That softer spring and shock for the higher speed stuff, but oversteer is good. There's nothing worse than understeer, and this car does not have understeer. That's for sure. I can kind of put it wherever I want to. That's what's so great about these cars. All right, so it's no secret that Mazdas are raced, especially the Miata, all over the world. The thing about this car is it'll do a really quick lap, especially at a place like Lambo Sports Park. So I'm gonna try to do some fast laps and see how quick it'll go. Let's see what it's got. But it's fun that I can be so aggressive. That's the exact balance I love. A little bit of compression here, we'll get that grip back. That's fast. Alright, so 136 here at AMP. Not a lot of horsepower, not big tires, anything like that, but mid 30s for a street car is good. I think a lot of guys probably do mid 30s in their GT3s here. So to be able to kind of come out and go that quick in a, a car uh, that doesn't have a lot of anything but good balance and that you can be really aggressive with, that's kind of what the Miata is all about. All right, now it's the end of the day. It's time for us to rate the Miata. We have our categories here and we've lined up our scores. I have not seen Lee's scores. I've been very careful about that and he's been very careful about that with mine. So Lee, handling and feel, I give an eight. I'm at a six. Okay. Uh, it handles good, I would say. It's just a bit soft for me. I didn't like that at all, especially in the high speed stuff. The balance was great, but as far as feel goes in that category, yeah, it's a six. I thought it was good with the upgraded uh, suspension this one has versus the stock Miata. It's way better, but the electronic steering is a little bit numb, so that's why I took a couple points off. It's a little nummy. It's also an easy fix. If you lower this thing and stiffen it up, it would be a nine. Approachability, I give a 10, because people like me can drive it fast, and people like you can drive it fast. I'm a 10. I don't know. If this is not a 10, I don't know what would be. So, there we go. So. Uh, sound? Oh. I think we made a line on this. I gave it a two because it sounds like nothing. I wanted to give it a zero, but um, I was just, just trying to be nice. So I gave it a one. It, at least it doesn't sound like it's gonna break, but it doesn't sound like much. Um, interior and tech, I, I give it a seven. It's incredibly comfortable. It's got everything you really need. It's just, it's not like artistic looking, but. Have you been in a nice luxury modern car lately? Yeah, but I know that this is not that thing. Okay, well, I gave it a three because it really doesn't have a whole lot to me. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, the look back, I gave a seven. <laughs> what? Hear me out. Not because it's the most beautiful car in the world. I think all Miatas are a little bit weird looking. Uh, they look kind of cool. But I think what I would do with this is every time I'd look at it, I would remember the times I've had with it. So I would look back at it and admire those memories. Not because it's gorgeous. That's a lot of, of thought you've put in. I would look back in it to see if it was rolling, if I was on a hill. But other than that, um, I wouldn't. So I gave it a zero. If it had pop-up headlights, if they brought the pop-up headlights back, my score would go up. I don't think those are, I don't like pop-up headlights at what? all. I think they look bad when they're up. It, okay. it just ruins the entire line, lines of the car. Aerodynamics too, you want to bring that up? Well, I had an NA Miata. It slowed down seven miles an hour <laughs> when you put the lights up. I believe it. All right, timelessness, I give a seven because I think these are just such good cars. Anyone that drives one will love them and they're, they're always relevant. I'm with you, actually scored higher than, than you did on that one. I gave it an eight. Um, it's kind of proved itself already to be timeless so you can't right. argue with that my, total, my total's a 41. <laughs> <laughs> well those, those sevens uh the seven look back added up there and some of the others <laughs> so.